if the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their money, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of their property until their children will wake up homeless. Thomas Jefferson. Following is a timeline demonstrating when and how a private central banking cartel got control of the government, the people, and the assets of the United States. 1913. With the passage of the Federal Reserve Act, a private foreign banking cartel was made the fiscal agent of the United States. Source document, Representative McFadden, Congressional Record, June 1932. From the website of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, quote, the entry of the United States into World War I added to the responsibilities of the young Federal Reserve Bank. It helped finance U.S. military expenditures by becoming the fiscal agent of the federal government. 1920, Congress handed the U.S. Treasury over to the same private banking cartel via the Independent Treasury Act, source document Independent Treasury Act, 1920. 1921, the Council on Foreign Relations was founded to direct the media. Paul Warburg was its first director. Warburg also drafted the Federal Reserve Act and became the Fed's first governor. Paul Warburg was an agent for the Rothschilds banking dynasty. 1925, the United States Corporation Company was chartered in perpetuity in Florida by its fiscal agent. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company. This company was created without the approval of Congress, nor the knowledge and authority of the American people. Note, in 1925, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York had offices on Cedar Street and on Broadway, both cited in the Articles of Incorporation. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company. The United States Corporation Company created a maximum of 100 shares of stock. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company. The Articles of Incorporation revealed the names of three individuals who held only five shares. The other shareholders were not identified. 1920s. The U.S. Treasury was raided by the private Federal Reserve Bank, who then caused the Great Depression and bankrupted the United States Corporation Company. Source document, Representative Lewis McFadden. Congressional Record, June 1932. 1933. A state of emergency was claimed, and Congress gave the President unconstitutional emergency powers. Source document, Congressional Record, March 1933. On behalf of the private Federal Reserve, President Roosevelt confiscated the people's gold and forced all to use the Federal Reserve notes from then on. Source document, Congressional Record, March 1933. The Federal Reserve is a private corporation. Therefore, their notes are privately owned currency. The people in the property of the United States was hypothecated and placed unlawfully in a public trust. Source document, Representative Trafficant, Congressional Record, March 1993. Hypothecate means to pledge as security without delivery of possession. 1933. The Internal Revenue Service was chartered in Delaware as a private corporation. It is not a division of the U.S. Treasury. Source document, Internal Revenue Service Corporate Charter, 1933. The United States is a private corporation with unnamed stockholders. A private corporation is its fiscal agent. A private corporation owns and circulates the currency we are forced to use. A private corporation expects us to pay them taxes. The U.S. CEO, the President, has maintained unconstitutional emergency powers for the past 80 years. Source document, 
Senate Report 93549 and Continuation of the National Emergency 2012-2013. Quote, All United States offices, officials, and departments are now operating within a de facto status in name only under emergency war powers, with the constitutional Republican form of government now dissolved. Source document, Representative Trafficant, Congressional Record, March 1993. Today, as has been demonstrated, the United States is just a corporate franchised network represented by their all caps names such as State of Ohio. Corporate statutes have replaced laws. A corporate statute is a rule of a corporation given the force of law by the consent of the parties. This consent generally requires a signed contract. From Judge Dale, author of The Great American Adventure, page 102, quote, The federal and state governments are not real. They are privately owned corporations called governments, and the law is nothing more than their corporate regulations called statutes, unquote. As corporations have no souls to save nor bodies to incarcerate, they are just dead legal structures. A dead legal structure cannot represent living people nor obligate living people to laws. Therefore, a corporation cannot be a sovereign government. It can only be a legal structure for commercial contracts, which is all the so-called United States government franchise network is. From Judge Dale's The Great American Adventure, page 10, quote, all of this deception is compounded by the refusal of ordinary Americans to realize, know, or understand that it is this secrecy and duplicity of privately owned corporations being surreptitiously portrayed as American agencies and government that they have come together to fleece the American people. For more information, read Judge Dale's The Great American Adventure. Page 1, Articles of Incorporation, filed 71525, 7 pages. Page 2, Certificate of Incorporation of United States Corporation Company, filed in Office Secretary of State of the State of Florida this 15 day of July, A.D., 1925, signed by H. Clay Crawford, Secretary of State. United States Corporation Company, Dover, Chicago, Albany, St. Louis, Jersey City, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, International Corporation Company, Rue de la Pe Paris, Executive Office, 65 Cedar Street, New York City. Page 3, Received July 15, 1925, State of Florida, Certificate of Incorporation of United States Corporation Company. Number one, the name of the corporation is United States Corporation Company. Number two, the nature of the business and the objects and purposes proposed to be transacted, promoted, or carried on by the corporation are as follows. To prepare or cause to be prepared 
and procure to be filed, recorded, registered, published, issued, or granted in accordance with law, articles or certificates of incorporation, applications for letter patent, charters and other instruments relating to the incorporation and organization of corporations and joint stock companies to prepare or cause to be prepared and procured to be filed, recorded, registered, published, issued or granted, certificates, reports, statements, applications for licenses to do business or other instruments in relation to domestic and foreign corporations, companies or associations, to provide and maintain domiciliary and other offices and facilities for corporations, companies, and associations and to act as agent in charge thereof and upon whom process against or any official notices to any such corporation, company, or association may be served or given and for any other lawful purpose, to act as the fiscal or transfer agent of or registrar of the stock or securities issued by any public or private corporation and in such capacity to receive and disperse money, page 4, to transfer, register, countersign, issue and deliver certificates of stocks, bonds, or other evidences of indebtedness, and to act as agent of any corporation, foreign or domestic, for any lawful purpose, to carry on the business of an appraisal and audit company, and in connection therewith, to make examinations and appraisals of the business and property of corporations and individuals, to examine and audit their books and accounts, and to make reports and certificates in respect thereof, to publish and deal in books, periodicals, pamphlets, legal forms, and blanks of all kinds, to acquire by purchase or otherwise, and to hold for investment or otherwise, to use sell, lease, or dispose of real estate and real property, and any interest, estate, or rights therein, to acquire by purchase subscription or otherwise, and to hold for investment or otherwise, and to use, sell, or dispose of shares of stock, bonds, or any other obligations or securities of any corporation, domestic or foreign, to aid in any manner any corporation whose shares of stock, bonds, or other obligations are held or in any manner guaranteed by the company or in which the company is in any way interested, and to do any other acts or things for the preservation, protection, improvement, or enhancement of the value of any such shares of stock, bonds, or other obligations, or to do any acts or things designed for any such purpose and while owner of any such shares of stock, bonds, or other obligations, to exercise all the rights, powers, and privileges of ownership thereof, and to exercise any and all voting powers thereon, to acquire by purchase or otherwise, and to hold, own, use, grant licenses in respect to, or otherwise turn to, account or dispose of any copyrights, trademarks, inventions, patent rights, and letters patent of the United States or of any other country. The business of the corporation is from time to time to do any one or more of the acts and things herein set forth, and it may conduct business in the state of Florida, other states, the District of Columbia, the territories and colonies of the United States, and in foreign countries, have one or more offices out of the state of Florida, and hold, purchase, mortgage, and convey real and personal property with or without of the state of Florida. Number three, the maximum number of shares which this corporation is authorized to have outstanding at any one time is 100, each of which shares shall have a par value of $100. Number four, the amount of capital with which the corporation will begin business is $500. Number five, the corporation is to have perpetual existence. Number six, the principal office of the corporation shall be located 
in the Centennial Building, Tallahassee, Leon County. Number seven, the number of directors shall be three. Number eight, the names of the directors who shall hold office for the first year of the corporation's existence or until their successors are elected and have qualified and their post office addresses are as follows. Page 6. Harry O'Coglin, 150 Broadway, New York, New York. Samuel B. Howard, 150 Broadway, New York, New York. Arthur W. Britton, 150 Broadway, New York, New York. Number 9. The names and post office addresses of the subscribers of this certificate and the number of shares of stock which each agrees to take are as follows. Lewis B. Gunther, 150 Broadway, New York, New York, two shares. Samuel B. Howard, 150 Broadway, New York, New York, two shares. Arthur W. Britton, 150 Broadway, New York, New York, one share. Number 10. The directors and stockholders shall have power to hold their meetings and to have one or more offices and to keep the books of the corporation, except the original or duplicate stock ledger, outside of the state of Florida, at such place or places as from time to time may be designated by the bylaws or by resolution of the board. The directors shall have power, without the assent or vote of the stockholders, to make and alter bylaws of the corporation, to fix the times for the declaration and payment of dividends, and to fix and vary the amount to be reserved as working capital, to determine the use and disposition of any surplus or net profits over and above the capital stock paid in, and in their discretion the directors may use and apply any such surplus or accumulated profits in purchasing or acquiring the bonds or other obligations or shares of the capital stock of the corporation to such an extent and in such manner and upon such terms as the directors shall deem expedient. But shares of such capital stock so purchased or acquired may be resold unless such shares shall have been retired for the purposes of decreasing the corporation's capital stock as provided by law. Page 7. We the undersigned, being each of the original subscribers to capital stock herein before named, do hereby associate for the purpose of establishing a corporation pursuant to the corporation law, State of Florida, 1925. Witness our hands and seals the 7th day of July, 1925. Louis H. Gunther, Samuel B. Howard, Arthur W. Britton, in presence of Samuel G. Wood, as to all. State of New York, County of New York, July 7th, A.D., 1925, personally appeared before me, a notary public, in and for New York County, duly authorized to take acknowledgments. Louis H. Gunther, Samuel B. Howard, and Arthur W. Britton, to me known and known to me to be the persons described in and who executed the foregoing instruments, who each acknowledged to me that he executed the same freely and voluntarily as and for his act and deed for the uses and purposes therein expressed. Witness my hand and official seal the day and year in this certificate first above written at New York New York County, New York. Samuel G. Wood, Notary Public. My commission expires March 30th, 1927. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their money, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of their property until their children will wake up homeless. Thomas Jefferson Following is a timeline demonstrating when and how a private central banking cartel got control of the people and the assets of the United States. Each 1913, with the passage of the Federal Reserve Act, a private foreign banking cartel 
was made the fiscal agent of the United States. Source document, Representative McFadden, Congressional Record, June 1932. From the website of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, quote, the entry of the United States into World War I added to the responsibilities of the young Federal Reserve Bank. It helped finance U.S. military expenditures by becoming the fiscal agent of the federal government. Nineteen twenty, Congress handed the U.S. Treasury over to the same private banking cartel via the Independent Treasury Act. Source document: Independent Treasury Act, nineteen twenty. Nineteen twenty-one, the Council on Foreign Relations was founded to direct the media. Paul Warburg was its first director. Warburg also drafted the Federal Reserve Act and became the Fed's first governor. Paul Warburg was an agent for the foreign Rothschild banking dynasty. 1925, the United States Corporation Company was chartered in Florida by its fiscal agent. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company, 1925. This company was created without the approval of Congress nor the knowledge and authority of the American people. Note, in 1925, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York had offices on Cedar Street and on Broadway, both cited in the Articles of Incorporation. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company, 1925. 1920s, the U.S. Treasury was raided by the private Federal Reserve bankers, who then caused the Great Depression and bankrupted the United States Corporation Company. Source document, Representative McFadden, Congressional Record, June 1932. 1933, a state of emergency was claimed, and Congress gave the President unconstitutional emergency powers. Source document, Congressional Record, March 1933. On behalf of the private Federal Reserve, President Roosevelt confiscated the people's gold and forced all to use their private currency, the Federal Reserve note, from then on. Source document, Congressional Record, March 1933. The property and the people of the United States was hypothecated and placed unlawfully in a public trust. Source document, Representative Trafficant, Congressional Record, March 1993. The Internal Revenue Service was chartered in Delaware as a private corporation. It is not a division of the U.S. Treasury. Source document, Internal Revenue Service Corporate Charter. 1933. The U.S. President, CEO, has maintained unconstitutional dictatorial emergency power for the last 80 years. Source documents, Senate Report 93549, 1973, and Continuation of the National Emergency, 2012-2013. Today, as has been demonstrated, the United States is just a corporate franchised network represented by their all-cap names, such as State of Ohio. Corporate statutes have replaced laws. A corporate statute is a rule of a corporation given the force of law by the consent of the people. This consent generally requires a signed contract. As corporations have no souls to save nor bodies to incarcerate, they are just dead legal structures. A dead legal structure cannot represent living people nor obligate them to laws. Therefore, a corporation cannot be a sovereign government. 
It can only be a legal structure for commercial contracts, which is all the so-called United States government franchise network is. From Judge Dale's The Great American Adventure, page 10, quote, All of this deception is compounded by the refusal of ordinary Americans to realize, know, or understand that it is this secrecy and duplicity of privately owned corporations being surreptitiously, falsely, portrayed as American agencies and government that have come together to fleece the American people.